everybody. It's now my pleasure to welcome Nick to the show. How is it going over there? How are you? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Good to see you. Thanks. Absolutely. We really appreciate you joining. People are already buzzing in the chat about the tracks. They're saying welcome. Of course, we have to dive into your new album, Push. It's officially out as it dropped only a couple of months back. So what's your overall feeling on the record now that there's kind of been a little bit of time for the world to hear it and just for that initial release to sink in for you? Yeah, it's been a roller coaster of going from being a band that's been on the instrumental underground for a while to bring in, you know, a, a vocalist that I grew up listening to, you know, far with Water and Solutions um, was a seminal album for us. And so to have Jonah involved in the record and to have Mitch from Wilhaven, who are another band that just, you know, are phenomenal um, involved in the record um, has been f- fantastic. So that sort of bridging the gap into the world of vocals and everything has been, you know, it's, the reception has been really cool. So it's been, um, it's, it's, it's been, we've smashed the glass ceiling and we're now in the world of, of, of vocals, um, but we're still, we still obviously still love instrumental rock as well, so trying to balance the two. I'm so glad you brought that up because one of the first things that's very noticeable is simply that shift in sound on the record as it does veer away from the usual instrumental sound. So what made you kind of want to shatter that and explore even more and just change the sound to a more post-hardcore alternative one with the vocals? Yeah, and you, you summed it up. The uh, the post hardcore element started sort of creeping in, and when we were, you know, from from the bands that we've worked with, and you know, working with with Karma to Burn and and some of the the bands from the desert and things like that, it was instrumental. We were able to learn so much with them, and then you know, some of the other genres, you know, that we love, uh, started to creep into this into the, into the writing. Some of the songs have been around for a while and never quite fit with with records that we put out. And then slowly more and more tracks started to build of that ilk. And we started to think, well, how, how are we going to do this? Because the tracks are going, they were minutes, now three, three and a half minutes. And then the band I was in before, uh, my first band, which was also with Marlon, uh, we had a vocalist who sounded kind of like Chino, kind of like Jonah. And so I knew that it would, it, it could work if we were applying ourselves, but we actually felt, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's bring Jonah in and, Let's let's see what he thinks of these few tracks. He came in. He loved what he heard. He came into the studio and the the, the listen video that was just on is showing him in the in the studio trying out all the ideas, getting the vocals down, and then from then moving and and, and doing a whole album with him and, and Mitch coming on board and creating that whole new album journey. I always love hearing about when bands are putting a record together because it's like watching your baby grow up and we like that insight at the same time. So what would you say was one of the best moments you had while putting Push together? Was it simply getting the guys on board and thinking, oh my gosh, we have them locked down, the vocals are working, kind of just bring us into your world a little bit? Yeah, it was, I think when when we started to hear how much the music had to make way for the vocals, and it opened up a whole new aspect of before when it's instrumental, you can build and build and build. You can let the guitars do what they like. Things can go off at a tangent and you can create this whole instrumental uh, musical you know, odyssey. But when the vocals are there, you have to acknowledge that they are front and center and the lyrics and the content steers in many ways, like the musical, the music around it. And even though the music's written first and is always sort of foremost, the lyrics change the tone and the dynamics and the vocal delivery massively so Jonah who's you know tremendously experienced he helped us in terms of how we would write and and music so he had to fit a lot more in three and a half minutes to keep it interesting and exciting (laughs) then his melodies his lyrics the tones some of the sentiments were all things that we'd not been exposed to before so it felt as well as the fact that he, you know, he walks through the door and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff, you've got all of that to deal with. And then you've actually got to write and, and go with the moment. And previously, you know, working with, you know, Karma to Burn and, and Yawning Man and, and those bands, when it's instrumental, you've got other musicians in the room. And Jonah is a musician, but he's also a vocalist. And so you build around that. And that was a totally different experience than the most incredible sort of bridges, I think, we've ever, we've ever had to cross in terms of bridging that gulf of instrumental through to vocal. 
seeing how positive the experience was and just how effortless it comes across listening to it afterwards, do you think that vocals are something you want to keep on forthcoming records? Or maybe you could put in like your instrumental interludes in between. I'm kind of curious where you want to go moving forward. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we all felt that the vocals added an extra dimension uh, and it helped us improve as songwriters because sometimes when we were doing the instrumental thing, you know, we were hanging out with bands and playing with bands that were like diehard instrumental bands. And we, we sat quite happily with them and, and, and everything, but then we were never sort of, we never said never. And so when it felt like it was going to become a really hard thing to do, we knew that it was something we, we wanted to do. So I think, yeah, moving forward, we'll, we'll definitely be integrating that into different themes. But what we're trying to build at the moment is almost like these different strands that almost will all interweave together because the band's been going a, okay. a while, but it's got different styles of music that is moving along. So it's got the post hardcore thing. It's got the, the riff rock thing. We've got the desert ambient thing and trying to move them all together. It's a bit like, you know, trying to move forward the Marvel cinematic universe, you know, and then trying to get them to all interlink. It's a pretty big challenge. You know what, though? You're doing a great job of it because sometimes I'll listen to a song and I think, man, this band tackled a lot. You can kind of hear what they're trying to do, but it doesn't mesh. But as soon as I listened to that track we were jamming to earlier, uh, no pun intended there, but as soon as I listened to it, I thought this just works really effortlessly. So clearly nothing to worry about going forward. Right on. Thanks. We're, we're quite of happy course. that it means that we can tap into music and genres that we loved because so much of so many cool things were happening in the 90s there was the desert rock thing the post hardcore thing you know all the alternative metal that was coming up all of the different sounds that were being generated we don't just want to be sort of doing one thing and emulating or working to develop that it's it's cool to sort of take all of the different things that we're doing and, and keep moving them forward for us and then bringing them together and doing that it keeps it refreshing and satisfying and, you know, that, that is something which is, is quite exciting for us. And um, yeah, just, just tapping into uh, new audiences who previously we might not have had access to because, you know, the instrumental underground rock is, you know, it's, it's still fairly niche. Uh, has been great for us because good music is good music. And, yes. and we write music that we would want to listen to ourselves. And we hope that other people would, would be into it. And they seem to be so far, which is, which is, which is great. That's awesome. Well, of course, we've been talking about your music, but the last question I wanted to ask you today is about uh, other artists. If you could actually see one band live that you've yet to right now, who's that one sitting atop the bucket list? Oh, well, bands that are still going that I've not seen. Yes. Well, I've, I've been fortunate enough to see quite a lot, <laughs> which has been great. Um, there are still a few that I've not actually, I think I've not been able to see. Um, I don't know. Is it? Is, is it? Is there any chance? Is it? Are this, is there any chance that these bands might reform in the future? I suppose. <laughs> you you I, know what? You have free reign. You can choose whoever you like. <laughs> I, I would like. I would like to think that at some stage um, there would be the opportunity for Caius to play together um, in one form or another, and that would be really special because they are a band choice. which are seminal and influential. And, you know, I know a few of the guys and I've worked with a few of the guys from that band. And um, I just think that there's an opportunity for, you know, we're, we're blessed to be in a point in time where there's so much great music around. But while those people are still around, that there is still an opportunity theoretically for them to play together. And that should never be sort of lost or turned down. I'd like to see, um, you know, there are a few bands that I missed in the late 90s, which would be which would be great to see, but there's probably no chance of that happening now. But while the while the, the, the musicians are still around, I think that there's still hope. And I always sort of hold to that hope and think, you know, that that would be awesome. We just got to keep putting it into the universe, Nick, and fingers crossed it'll come true. <laughs> Absolutely. Or just keep well, texting them saying, do it. Yeah, that works too. <laughs> we can we can just stalk them and just say, why aren't you here yet? <laughs> Well, I want to say thank you so, so much for hopping on here. It was wonderful being able to learn more about the record, the band, just the behind the scenes, really. So, Nick, we really do appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks, everyone. Of course. Bye. Thanks. Bye.